I'm really looking forward to getting started on this new section of my um, DIY CPU, my 8-bit homemade CPU. I've got the uh, latest 10 by 10 centimeter PCB from JLC PCB right here, just been delivered. And um, I've got to start soldering a few sockets in. It's the register transfer machine. Well, with my new delivery of sockets, I should be able to get this um, thing soldered together in no time at all. So, um, let's have a look at this. Yeah, these JLC PCB PCBs are absolute delight to solder to. Can't really go wrong. Fine solder. Soldering iron set to 334 degrees C, and yeah, it's an absolute breeze. What else have I got to solder? Um, there they are. Let's do this line. Soldering iron in, solder in, solder away, soldering iron away. That's my technique. Um, the wiring on this, the um. I always do auto routing on every PCB I've made. I've always just pressed the auto route button and set the tracks to the default width, which is pretty narrow. Um, and because these are uh, through hole components, the gaps between the, the pins is sufficiently big that it can route sometimes one. I think it even will sometimes route two tracks between um, between two of the pins of the uh, of an IC, which means that routing must be an absolute doddle for the for the auto router. And uh, the only modification I make is I set the power uh, like five volt and the zero volt line. I set those to a slightly thicker track. I think I set those to double the default value. You might be able to see, where can you see a power line on this? Yeah, uh, that one is a power line, that one's a power line. It's just slightly thicker than the other ones. And that means that, um, well, I don't know what that means, to be honest. I just thought it was a good idea. Now, the register transfer machine is composed really of um, mm, a couple of main parts. So this is part of the schematic for it that um, I drew up on Easy EDA. Um, but what are the parts? Well, there's the bus. The main flow of data through the uh, whole CPU is on an 8-bit bus, which is why it's an 8-bit CPU. And then there's registers. And uh, I've got one, two, three, kind of four registers, I think, on my on this particular prototype register transfer machine. So there is how I've implemented one register out of the four with a little bit of muck on it and um the heart of it the heart of the register transfer machine itself or the heart of a particular register is an hc um 574 so 74 hc 574 which is an 8-bit register so it's, it's like a it can store an 8-bit number it has an, an input on the left there it's got an output on the right hand side and it can be it can produce its output onto the data bus with the output enable line and it can store whatever number it's presented with by um, sending a clock pulse into the clock line so you present an 8-bit number on the left um, you clock it to store the 8-bit number and if you want to see what the 8-bit number is on the output you take the output enable line low now you might notice that I've got the output enable line permanently connected to ground. And the reason is I wanted to output enable it myself. So um, I've got a 74HC244, which is a, an 8-bit buffer, a tri-state buffer. And I'm using that as the output enable instead of the output enable that's in the register. And the reason for that is I want to be able to see what's in the register. So I've got eight LEDs down here um, and so whatever is in the register is permanently um, visible at the outputs because I've grounded the output enable 
so I can view it permanently on these register on these LEDs. And when I want the output to be available back to the bus again, I take the output enable of this buffer low in order to publish the data back out onto the bus. So I'm using two words, um, store and publish, to describe um, storing data in the register and publishing the data back out onto the data bus. So what have I assembled so far? Well, let's look at one register. So that would be this IC, this IC, and the LEDs, and it's their resistors. And they, um, <clears throat> they between them, can store one 8-bit number. So I've got one register here, another one uh, partially constructed here. There's another one here. This is where my world's feeblest ALU is going to sit. And this is um, a register here. So what I'm going to do is implement three of the registers and have a little play around with them and see what I can do with them. And then I'll go on to finish off the rest of the stuff. OK, and how about a little bit of continuity check? Um, ground. That's a bad start, isn't it? That one works. Oh. Ooh. Good, good. Bad. Uh, no, hold on, I'm being stupid. That one wouldn't, I wouldn't expect ground to be there. <laughs> Phew. Uh, ground. Lovely. Five volts. Yes, those ones are the where the LED arrays sit. There's not going to be any ground there. I don't think, in fact, ground would be that one. Uh, five volts now. Five, five, uh, five, five, five. Anything else? They won't be at five. Lovely. 